Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for this video, which is a bit of a sewing catch up. So I've got quite a mix to share today. I've got a new make that I finished this week. I've got a new pattern and some new fabric too. I've also started working on a new crochet project. So I'm going to be talking about that as well, but I'll make sure to pop that at the end of the video after all of the sewing content. So yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing with you what I've been up to over the last week and what's been arriving at my house. But I thought, um, first of all, I'll start off as ever with what I'm wearing today. And today it's actually a lovely sunny day here in the south of England, which is really nice. Just looking out the window at the moment, there's not a cloud in sight. The sky is totally blue, which is really lovely. And um, yeah, it's definitely got me feeling quite summery, but there's still a bit of a chill in the air. So today, I'm wearing what feels like quite a nice summery top but with a pair of ready to wear jeans um, just to keep me cozy because it isn't that warm quite yet. But yeah, this top is a handmade top and it's a funny one actually because it didn't originally start off as a top. Um, I originally used this fabric to make a dress and I made the dress using this pattern here, which is the plum dress pattern by Kokowawa Crafts. It's a really cute woven dress pattern that I think was released at least a couple of years ago. I think I made this dress originally a couple of years ago at least. But it's got some really cute details to it, this dress. So it's kind of like a relaxed, oversized baby doll style dress with this round neck. It's got a slightly dropped shoulder if you make the wintry version and a sleeve added on. Or you can make the summery version with this cute ruffle um, on the end of the shoulder, which is a really cute feature. And that was what originally drew me to this pattern. Then it's got a gathered skirt added on, which you can either make as above the knee or sort of below the knee length. And then the back is a button down back, which I do like. And the size range on this pattern is really good too. There are two size categories available. There is a UK 6 up to the UK 24, which comes in a B cup. And then there's a UK 18 up to the UK 36, which is available in a D cup. But yeah, I just think it's a really cute little woven dress pattern. Um, and I've made two versions to date, both this summery version with the sleeve ruffle, which is the feature I really love on this dress. And the first version I made um, in a blue double gauze, it's like a royal blue double gauze, so quite a bright blue. Um, and I really love that version. I often reach for it in summer. And I think it works really well, this dress in a double gauze, because the body in the double gauze means you really see that ruffle on the sleeve um, and it really comes out as a nice feature. And I remember having fun with that dress and adding on hot pink buttons down the back so you could see the button placket nicely too. And it's just one I enjoyed wearing a lot. So I thought I'd make a second version. And I thought I'd try making my second version in a viscose fabric. So I had this lovely viscose. I think it came from Sew Me Sunshine quite a long time ago now, so I doubt it's still in stock there. But they often do have lovely viscose fabrics available, so I definitely recommend checking out their current viscose range. I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, it's got this black base and these really pretty florals. Um, I really like the colours, the sort of purple and the pink and the yellow and the white together. So I thought I'd turn this fabric into a plum dress, but when I sewed it up, I sewed it up exactly the same as the first version but when I wore it I just didn't feel so comfortable in it as I did for my first version. I think firstly because the viscose is so much more drapey you don't the sleeve ruffle is a lot more subtle and I think it as well this being quite a busy print it gets a little bit more lost in the busy print and it just felt like with the dress being a bit oversized it just felt like it hung on me a little bit and felt like with the busy print as well that it was wearing me and yeah it just didn't feel quite right on me so I pretty much put it away in my wardrobe and then in the summer I sort of got it out and put it on but didn't end up wearing it um, for the day just because I choose something else I felt a bit more comfortable in. So last summer I decided to get the dress out and I thought I'd really like to be able to do something to it so I could still be able to enjoy this lovely print um, and maybe turn it into a garment I would feel more comfortable wearing. So I decided to do a little refashion project and treat it as just a bit of a fun project and see what I could make. Um, so what I decided to do is turn it into a little ruffly top. So I basically ended up unpicking the skirt and taking that off the bodice. And the first thing I did was adjust the bodice a little bit. I pretty much brought in the side seams a bit just to take a little bit of the volume out because it felt like in the viscose, it just felt a bit too voluminous. Um, so I took a bit out of each of the side seams of the bodice um, and then on the skirt, I had to first of all take the pockets off because I wanted to use some of the skirts to make a little ruffle on the top. 
So I had to unpick the top, the pockets first, and then re-sew the side seams. And it took quite a while because I'd overlocked all of the seams. So there's quite a lot of overlocking threads to unpick. But I thought I'd just take my time over it. I could do the unpicking sort of um, in the evening in front of the TV. Just take my time over it quite careful. Because I do find with a viscose it can start to fray a bit if you're a bit too rough when unpicking. Um, so I got that all unpicked, re-sewed the side seams on the skirt and then cropped it off and reattached it to the top to turn it into a little ruffly top. And actually I really love how it's turned out. I'll stand up a bit so you can see how it looks now. Um, so yeah, you can see it's just a cute ruffly top with a much shorter ruffle, which is basically being cropped off. And I kept the length on the bodice. I didn't adjust the bodice length. It's already quite a high, um, high waist, I think. It's kind of like an empire line style waist. I'll show you, it kind of comes down the bodice to here. So not much below my bust. Um, so I kept that length and just added on this ruffle. And I think the shorter ruffle works well with the little sleeve ruffle. It doesn't sort of make it, it kind of makes it a bit more balanced, I guess I feel. And I kept the button placket down the back. This is actually um, a placket that you have to, it's not just like a placket for show, it's a proper placket because it's quite a sort of narrow opening at the top here. So I have to undo the top button to be able to get it on over my head. Um, I'll turn around and show you the buttons. I had fun picking out some sort of bright yellow buttons, which I thought would tie in with the yellows. Um, and I think I used either purple or black thread, um, so you could kind of see the buttons on the back. I'll turn around so you can see those, hopefully. Hopefully you can see those. Um, see, I'm really glad I was able to sort of refashion the dress that wasn't quite working for me into a top I really like and actually this top's really nice and comfy to wear. The sleeves are sort of nice and loose and it feels quite swishy with this sort of little short ruffle on it and I think it works quite well with a pair of jeans. Um, I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like on now. And I mentioned the sizing in terms of the size I went for. So on the original dress I made I'd already sized down and gone for the UK size 6 and the, gar the, sort of the body measurements for the size 6 is 31 inch bust, 23 inch waist and 31 inch hips, which is smaller than me on all counts. I'm 32 inch bust, 26 inch waist and 36 inch hips. So particularly um, the waist and hips measurements, the size six are a fair bit smaller than my measurements. But when you look at the finished garment measurements for the size six, um, that shows a bust of 38 inches, a waist of 38 inches and hips of 50 inches. So there is really loads of ease in this dress. It is designed to be quite oversized. Um, so I guess it is not surprising if I didn't want it too oversized, I had to sort of tweak it and size down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And I think actually the plum dress works really well, cropped off into a top. And I actually really like the idea of making a top version in double gauze too, because I love my um, dress version in double gauze. And I think the top would be really cute with the ruffle a bit more voluminous on a top too. So I might consider making that at some point in the future. But yeah, I'm really enjoying wearing this one today. It does feel like quite a nice summery fabric and I think it's really pretty this fabric so I'm glad I was able to sort of rescue it and turn it into something that I'm going to hopefully wear a lot more. But yeah that is what I'm wearing today. So the next thing I wanted to share in this video is a new make that I finished this week and if you're watching my recent videos you'll know I recently made a pair of trousers um, using this pattern here which is the Friday Pattern Co Saguaro set which is a woven top and trousers pattern. The trousers have an elasticated waist and quite a wide leg, optional waist ties and a pocket. Um, and then the top features this sort of plunging V at the front. Again, an optional tie at the front there. These grown on sleeves and elastic under the bust. And it's a really cute set, but it's one I wasn't quite sold on when it was first released. I wasn't sure if it, it was for me, although I thought it looked lovely on other people. And I'm not a great trouser wearer generally, I often do opt for sort of skirts or dresses in summer. But then I decided to get the pattern and sort of have a go of the top just for fun. I had an off cut of some fabric that I thought make, might make quite a nice saguaro top. So I sewed that top up last year and I actually really enjoyed sewing it up and really um, liked it a lot better than I expected actually. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then this year I thought actually it might be nice to try the trousers on this pattern too. I thought I could make a pair that would be a bit of a summer staple that I could wear with lots of different sort of tops. So I sewed up that pair. I finished them, I hemmed them last week finally, having sewed them up a few weeks before. And here they are, I'll have seen them in my last week's video. I made them this black. I thought it'd be quite a nice versatile colour. 
And the fabric I used is a viscose linen fabric that came from Guthrie Garney that they have available in quite a few colours. And it's lovely because it's got a nice bit of weight to it, but also drape, so I think it's perfect for a pair of trousers. Um, and so you can see I've got the, the ties there, the little um, slash pocket. It's got a nice wide leg on it. And um, yeah, I finally decided on length to sort of a sort of cropped, slightly cropped length, but not really cropped. I'll put a picture up in a moment so you can see. But yeah, after making these trousers, I quite fancied making a top that I thought would go nicely with them. Um, just, yeah, while I was in the mood for sewing something summery. So I had a look in, in my fabric remnants. I've got a few different remnants. I thought I had a couple of decent sized pieces of viscose left over from other projects that I might be able to squeeze a saguaro set top out of. So I found a fabric and sewed up a top and I really love how it's turned out actually. This is a fabric that I originally got from Rainbow Fabrics um, and I originally made last year in this fabric a wilder gown but a hacked wilder gown, a sleeveless version. Um, I used a tutorial from Alice who is the Polka Dot Palace on Instagram um, and she made a lovely sleeveless wild gown. I thought it'd be really fun and cute sort of flouncy summer dress. But that didn't actually take too much fabric, so I had a decent amount of this fabric left and enough just about to squeeze my saguaro top out of it. So here is my saguaro top that I've made this week. Um, it just kind of wants to slip off the hanger a bit, but oh, there you can see it. <laughs> Sitting a bit nicer there. So this, yeah, this is the viscose fabric. It's another sort of viscose chalet, um, similar to, yeah, my one I'm wearing today. With this lovely sort of monochromatic print, a black base and these cute little white flowers on it. Um, and I thought it would go really nicely with the black trousers as a kind of nice sort of matching set, but I'll probably wear it with other things too, and I'll wear these trousers with other things too, so not always together, but I thought they would look nice together. So this is my top. Um, I made a few, a couple of changes actually for my first saguaro top, which I've also got here. I thought I'd show you so you can see the differences. For both versions, I made the same size. I made a size extra small at the bust and then graded out to a size small on the waist based on my measurements. But for my first version, which I've got down here, I'll grab it. This is my first version. Again, I made it in a sort of leftover fabric. So it doesn't take too much fabric, this top. Um, so this is my first version. And I added on the, wait, the tie at the front for this version. And I lengthened the top by one and a half inches, I think. Because I do have a bit of a longer torso. And I didn't want it coming up too high and leaving too much of my tummy on show. Um, so yeah, that's my first version. I lengthened it by one and a half inches and added on this little tie. But for my second version, I decided, having seen how that one sat on me, it feels like there's a bit of excess fabric there and it creates a bit more of a floaty, blousy look to the sort of bodice. But I thought for this one I'd shorten it slightly, so I only lengthen this one by an inch. And I quite like both, actually. It's quite nice having a bit of difference between them. And I also didn't add the little front ties on this one. Um, I think I just crossed it a little bit more at the front to still give a bit of coverage there so it doesn't sort of expose too much. <laughs> So that is my second version. I love how it's turned out and I really like the length on this one too actually so I'm glad I decided to mix it up for my first version. And it's quite a nice though, it comes together quite quickly. I like how the neckline is finished with bias binding. I think that's always a really nice finish to a neckline. And I'll put up a picture so you can see what the top looks like on together with the trousers and you can see the length of the trousers there too. I really love this set actually. I love how it's turned out a lot more than I was expecting to. Um, like I mentioned before, I generally reach for a dress or a top and skirt in summer, but I'm really looking forward to wearing this set. I'll definitely be taking it when we go on holiday and I can't wait to get it on actually when the weather gets a bit warmer. So yeah, I really love how it's turned out and I definitely think I can see more um, of this pattern in my future. It's a really nice one to sew actually. I do find Friday pattern coat instructions are always really good and they always make for an enjoyable sew. And I just love the style of both the top and the bottoms and I wasn't sure how it would feel having a little bit of sort of midriff exposed but actually it doesn't feel like too much because the trousers are fairly high-waisted and I did lengthen that top slightly so yeah it feels comfortable to wear and yeah I really love how it's turned out so I was glad I had enough of this fabric to be able to squeeze out this little top because I think it goes really nicely with the back black trousers and it's nice to use up this fabric um that was just sitting otherwise sort of quite a decent sized piece unused so yeah really really happy with that make. So the next thing that I've got to share is the new pattern that arrived with me this week. And this also got a very summery vibe to it. I'm definitely getting into um, yeah, summer sewing right now. And this is a swimwear pattern because earlier this year, I think around Christmas and New Year, I bought some swimwear fabric from Fabric Godmother when they had 
their sort of fabric sale over the festive period. And I've been wanting to sew that fabric up into some swimwear before we go on holiday this summer. And I've kind of um, been undecided about what patterns I wanted to use and whether to use a pattern I already had or whether to try a new pattern. So I had a look on the Foldline pattern database online. I think it's a really great resource um, with loads of different patterns on there. It gives lots of inspiration. And I had a look at all the different swimwear patterns. There was one pattern that caught my eye and I thought I'd like to give it a try. And it's actually a big four pattern, which I don't often go for, but I just really like the look of this one. It is this pattern here. It is a new look 6734. So it's a pattern. It's got a couple of different sort of swimming costume options built in and also this I guess a kind of cover-up skirt um, that's got a sort of slit or sort of it's like a wrap skirt, I guess. Um, I'm not sure I'll, I'll actually make that. But what I really liked about this pattern was this um, pattern sort of version A here, which is for this kind of cute, slightly different swimming costume. I really love the style of it. The fact it had quite quick clean lines, but was a bit different. So it's got this one shoulder and then this little sort of cutout piece here and then a pants attached. And I just thought it was quite quite nice and quite an interesting shape. It might be quite fun to sew. Um, in terms of size, the pattern comes in a US 8 to 20, which takes you from a bust of 30 and a half inches up to a bust of 40 inches. So it's not got a really um, big size range on this one. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd give it a go and see how I got on. And I'm a bit nervous about trying a big four pattern for swimwear because swimwear is one of those things I don't feel really really comfortable sewing and um, I do quite like how indie patterns kind of hold your hand through the sewing process and I know the big four patterns aren't always quite like that so we'll see how I get on um, but I'm just looking forward to giving it a try and I guess the good thing about swimwear is it's stretch fabric so hopefully the fit will be a bit more forgiving than if I was making something in a woven fabric so I'm going to give it a try and see how I go but I just thought it was quite a pretty shape to it and it covers up enough um, it doesn't look too flimsy for me to be in the pool with the children if they're sort of pulling at my sewing costume. It should cover up enough, but also you just have a bit of interest to it. So yeah, I was quite excited when that arrives, arrived. And I'll show you the fabric I'm planning to make it in. I am planning to make it in just this plain black swim fabric here. Um, it came from Fabric Godmother. I think it's a Liberty swim fabric, so nice quality. And it's quite a good price, especially with the discount over the festive period. Um, and also what I like about swimming um when you're sewing swimwear is you don't need too much fabric either so yeah you'd have to sort of spend too much um but yeah so i'm just making it in plain black it is lined i think it's fully lined the top and the bottom are both lined so hopefully i'll make quite a nice sort of um yeah hopefully i'll make quite a nice swim swimsuit but i'll let you know how i get on with it i need to have a proper look and figure out what size i need to trace out and if i want to make any adjustments or anything i think i might need to probably lengthen the body somewhere either to bring the pants or the sort of the other swimming bottoms up or to maybe make the bodice a bit longer because I do find on a couple of other swimming patterns I remember when I made the opium pilatus which is a swimming costume um, I remember it feeling a bit squeezed um, on the length um because I do have a longer body so yeah I might just make a couple of tweaks before I sew it up but I'm gonna give it a go and I'll let you know how I get on I have got one other swim fabric I also bought in the um sales at Christmas and I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this one yet this one's a bit more of a sort of um, printed fabric. I think it's really pretty actually. It's this one here. I think it's another Liberty one. Again, it came from Fabric Godmother. I'm not sure if these fabrics are still in stock. I'll check and I'll link them if they are. Um, but it's got this lovely ditzy floral print on. And I've sort of been wanting a ditzy floral swimming costume for a while. And I love the blue with the reds on. So when I saw this fabric, I just had to snap it up. Um, and with this one, I don't have firm plans for what I want to make. I did buy, I think I bought a slightly smaller amount of this one. I bought maybe a metre and a half of the black maybe. I think I might have just bought a metre of this fabric then I bought maybe a metre of this navy fabric to go as like a lining. I thought that'd work quite well as a lining to the printed fabric. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I'm going to make with this one. I need to have a look again at my swimming costume patterns. I don't think I'd probably use this pattern for that fabric. I feel like because it's got this sort of pretty floral, it might be nice for the pattern that maybe has a little tie or something a bit more sort of cutesy on it maybe. Um, but anyway, I need to think about what um, I'm going to do with this fabric. But I thought I'd get back into saying some swimwear first of all with this black fabric and try out this pattern. And yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a go. Whenever I try a big four pattern, it does build my confidence and make me think I'd like to try more. So fingers crossed I'll get on OK with this one. <laughs> so the next thing I've got to share is a new fabric that I bought this week. And I wasn't actually planning on buying any new fabric this week. Um, this was a bit of an impulse purchase. 
and that's quite unusual for me as you'll know if you've watched my channel for a while I generally like to buy fabrics with a particular project or plan in mind I don't like having too many fabrics sitting around uncut without set plans for them um, but anyway I was in town this week um, running a few errands and I popped into our local yarn and haberdashery shop um, which is a lovely little shop I've shopped there quite a lot over the years I bought yarn there, I bought some buttons and zips, and this week I was popping in to get some thread. And um, on the fabric front, historically, they've only really stocked quilting cottons. And I bought a few quilting cottons there over the years for crafty projects. And then last year, I bought all the, co bought all the cottons for my son's Minecraft quilt for that from there. It was quite handy actually because I could go in and have a look at all the different greens and put them together and see which ones I thought would work really well to make his Minecraft quilt. So I do feel really lucky to have the shop there. It's a really handy local resource. Um, anyway, historically they haven't stocked dressmaking fabrics and I hadn't been in for a while. And when I went in this week, the lady was saying that they have branched into dressmaking fabrics now and they had a little collection and didn't want to have a little look. So I thought, yes, I definitely would like to have a little look and see what they've got. Um, and they had a lovely range actually of different fabrics and prints and all sorts. They had viscose, jersey, um, they had some co um, cotton, some lovely cotton lawns actually with some prints that really reminds me of Liberty prints. So I'll definitely go back and have another look at those. And yeah, a whole range of different fabrics, I think some linens too. So they also mentioned they had a discount code going when I was in, that was quite um, good luck, um, to celebrate the return of the Great British Sewing Bee, which is coming back quite soon, I think. Um, so I thought I'd have a little look and I thought it'd be a good time to buy something while that discount code was going. And I saw a lovely viscose print that I thought would make something lovely for summer. So I got that. So here is the fabric I bought. It's a really pretty viscose. Um, it's got a lovely drape to it, but it's nice and opaque too. So I think it'll be perfect for turning in something for summer. I've got a few plans. I'll share them in a moment. Um, but I thought it was a really lovely fabric. It's got a navy base to it. The colours are right up my street on this fabric, really. A navy base. And it's got a print that sort of reminds me of a ditzy floral, but actually... They aren't flowers, they're almost little sort of feathery dots um, with little red flecks on too. So I love the sort of navy red and white in this fabric and I do love a sort of ditzy style print. That had it in a couple of other colourways I think as well. There was like a teal, possibly sort of like an ochre or something like that. Um, I just love the navy. So yeah, I got 2.5 metres of this fabric and I thought it'd be really nice to turn it into something quite summery. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to make but I bought 2.5 meters to give me a bit of flexibility and a couple of patterns I had in mind for this fabric are firstly this one here the LED wrap dress pattern by Closet Core Patterns I made one of these quite recently you may have seen um, I made a midi length with this sort of short sleeve version in a um, viscose like a black viscose with flowers on and that version felt quite I don't know maybe a bit eveningy I quite had the idea of wearing it out on an evening on holiday or that sort of thing although I think it'll make a lovely summer dress in a day too but with the sort of black base it felt more sort of a bit more formal I guess but I quite like the idea of maybe turn this into more of like a daytime LED wrap dress maybe I thought it would work well for that so that was one option another option I quite liked for this fabric was potentially using this pattern here the Shelby dress and romper pattern by True Bias um, yeah I really like the sort of shorter version of this pattern there's also a longer length version but I don't think I'd probably make that one um, myself and um, but yeah I really like the idea of making a little cropped sort of tea dress style dress or maybe even trying the romper I've not tried that before the kind of culotte style dress version so I thought that'd be another nice option it would work quite well with this fabric maybe but yeah so I think I'd like to turn in some sort of dress or along those lines but I don't know which yet um if you have any ideas or if you particularly like the idea of one of those dresses then let me know um because as I said, it was an impulse buy. I didn't buy it with a particular plan in mind. So now I'm kind of umming and ahhing a little bit. But I'd quite like to start up sooner rather than later. So I can hopefully enjoy wearing this summer. Just the colours are just really, um, yeah, up my street. And it's really nice quality viscose too. So yeah, it's quite exciting. I did actually ring my husband after I'd bought this fabric and left the shop and said, you probably don't want to know this. Um, but our local shop has now started selling dressmaking fabrics, which seems quite dangerous to me. I think I'll be in there a bit more. Um, and he laughed um, because yeah yeah we don't have we haven't really got a local shop sewing selling fabrics so much I live quite close to Sewis Faction um, which used to have dressmaking fabrics but they have closed their dressmaking fabric section and sort of they're focusing more on running courses and classes now so 
yeah i'm having a very local shop that sells dressmaking fabrics could be a little bit dangerous on the bank the balance but it's really lovely to be able to go and browse fabrics in the real life isn't it and to be able to sort of feel them and see how they move and everything so yeah that is my fabric purchase this thing that i wasn't planning to buy but i am yeah very happy with still <laughs> So the next thing that I wanted to share is my new crochet project, which I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into. So as you probably know, I've been sort of teaching myself to crochet over the last few months. I've been knitting for a fair few years now. Um, and over the years, I've also tried to get into crochet because I'd love to be able to do both. But every time I've tried crochet, it really hasn't clicked and I feel like I've sort of failed miserably. So I've sort of gone back to my knitting. But before Christmas, um, I used a bit of crochet to finish off a knitting pattern that I was working on. And it felt like the crochet was finally starting to click and I felt like I had a better idea of what I was doing and I wasn't just sort of muddling through feeling a bit lost. So I thought while crochet was starting to click for me, I would sort of run with it and try to sort of um, try a couple of different projects and try to build up my skills and really learn how to do it and really get it. So I've been really enjoying trying. I've made um, a granny square blanket in crochet for my daughter to use with her dolls. It's just a little blanket. And then more recently, I've made a bag using a We Are Knitters pattern, like a tote bag, which I really enjoyed doing too. So I thought having had a couple of projects under my belt and starting to feel a bit more like I know what I'm doing, I thought I'd try to make myself a garment to wear, which feels a little bit daunting um, because... I think I'd built up a lot longer at knitting before I started making garments for myself. Um, so I'm doing this a bit earlier, but I just thought, let's give it a go. It feels like I'm getting it. I want a bit more of a new challenge and it's a fairly straightforward looking garment. Um, so I'm hoping I'll get it on okay, but I thought even if I don't, I'll learn something while I'm doing it. So my plan is to make this cute little crochet vest here. This is a pattern by Daisy and Peace and it's called their vest number 23. And I came across the um, crochet pattern company Daisy and Peace um, through somebody I follow on Instagram called Lisa. She's so Lisa Life on Instagram. I'll link her down below. And she does a lot of crochet makes as well as dressmaking. Um, and I always enjoy what, seeing what she's up to. And she made a version of this um, vest. And I thought it was a really cute pattern. And I thought I'd like to give it a go. And I thought with it just being a sort of front and back and then some sort of armholes on the top, it wasn't as complicated as making like a more bigger garment with sleeves or anything like that. So yeah, I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it does say it's designed for upper beginner to intermediate. So we'll see how I get on. But I just love the sort of design of it with how these, the way you crochet and it creates these little wiggly lines. I thought it's really cute in the two colours. And I thought it'd be a fun layering piece for sort of wintry weather. So not exactly suitable for now, but it'll probably take me a while to make it. So probably it'll be cold weather again by the time I finish. But I just thought it'd be fun to try. Um, there's quite a lot of um pictures in the pattern for example this picture here um i'm gonna have to sort of have a proper read to get my head around it all but i have started practicing i thought before i launched straight into it i'd have a practice of some of the different stitches using some yarn that i'm not planning on using for the final thing just some um double knit yarn i've got kicking around so i'll show you some of my little testers i've got at the moment on my ball i was practicing a bit of the rib stitch i haven't got very far on that they use the bottom so it's a bit of rib stitch and i think it's really different to knitting because with knitting rib stitch you go across whereas with crochet you go up and down so i found that a bit yeah different and then i've been working on a bit of the main stitch as well so you can hopefully see a little bit there it doesn't look the same because it's all in blue and obviously the pattern uses two different colors so it gives the wiggly effect but um yeah i've got a couple of goes of that i was just trying to figure it out a little bit so I'm just trying to take it slowly and not rush it really um which isn't in my nature because i am sort of personally like to just get straight into something so it, i feel like with crafting generally it does encourage me to be a bit more patient and to take my time um which i quite like i think it definitely does help on that front um so yeah there's another bit there just a few little bits i've been working on to kind of try and figure out these instructions um, oh what was it gonna i mentioned the sizing on this vest as well in case you're interested um so it goes from an extra small up to an extra extra large which takes you from a bust of 32 and a half inches up to a bust of 45 and a half inches um so i think my bust would put me as an extra small so it's not got the biggest size range ever but there is a bit of ease in the finished vest so um the extra small the bust my bust size 32 and a half inches the finished vest should be 36 inches and i guess as ever with knitting and crochet getting the right tension will be key so at the moment i'm using this um random wool i had in my stash but when i get onto my proper wool i'll definitely do a tension gauge and yeah, try and do that all properly to make sure it doesn't end up far too small or far too big or anything. 
So in terms of the yarn required, this vest is designed to be knitted in double knit weight yarn, which I'm not used to knitting in for adult garments. I've made quite a lot of dolls clothes in double knit and also like cardigans for my daughter and that sort of thing. But most of the garments I've knitted have been in a slightly heavier weight yarn, like an Aran weight or a chunky weight. So it'll be interesting to give a garment in double knit a go. I guess it'll be a bit finer um, to knit. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. And I've got the yarn for this project. Um, I had a lot of fun choosing these colours actually. So these are the two colours I've gone for that I'm going to put together to make my vest. Um, and I really love them together actually. So I've gone for this sort of cherry red and this really pretty pink. And I think it'll make a really fun jazzy um, vest. So yeah, I'm really happy with those colours. They are both yarn by Debbie Bliss. It's called Debbie Bliss Rialto DK Extra Fine Merino Wool. So yeah, this is Merino yarn, which I like because um, I find it doesn't itch on my skin like a lot of yarn does, um, like a lot of real wool yarn does. I find I can tolerate merino yarn. So yeah, um, I got this from Love Crafts. I'll link it down below. It was on offer when I got it. So I've got enough of the pattern. I'm hoping that'll be plenty. I don't know whether I might end up wanting to lengthen it a bit. I guess I'll have to see how I go with it really. But it's all a bit new to me. Um, I'm just really looking forward to giving it a try and um, I'll let you know how I got on and update you on my progress um, as I go along with this vest. So yeah, I'm quite excited to try my first proper garment crochet pattern. I think it's a really cute one. So hopefully it'll turn out well. We shall see. <laughs> so that was everything that I've got to share in today's video. So thank you so much for watching. Do let me know your thoughts on the fabric I bought this week and what you think I should make with that. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. And um, if you're new to my channel, then thanks so much for stopping by. Please do subscribe and press the bell icon, which means you'll be notified when I bring out future videos. I hope you've managed to fit a bit of crafting in this week too, and I hopefully see you for another video soon. But yeah, in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day. Um, and thank you again for watching. Bye.